Okay, so the, the presentation I did uh, with the, uh, uh, this timeline thing, I, I, I uh, wrote that uh, using uh, Razor, um, finding it's like trying to, to, to get two talks done in, in, in one fell swoop. Uh, so I'll just quickly uh, describe how I built this, like using features from, from CoverSide C1 and, and features from, uh, uh, from Razor to do it. So if you go to the uh, C1 console, the other tab, yeah. Um, let's start by uh, let's start by in the, in the media perspective. Uh, what I have is um, excellent. I have a media folder called Colorful Backgrounds. I've dumped a bunch of images in there. I'm using those to to show uh, a basically a random image behind each set. I'm not binding them to data. I could have done that, but I'm not. Um, and uh, so so I have some images in there. It's just media. And if you go to the data perspective, I created a, um, a page data folder. Um, I call it events. We have it here. Added it to a, a, a nice na a namespace. Added some fields to it. Basically, uh, just something that has a date, a headline, a catchphrase, and a description. And if we do a switch to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Everybody, if you do a switch to the uh, to the front end, so I can just okay. So we have uh, if you click just once, one forward. Uh, so I'm using the date here. I'm not showing the individual days, but uh, showing the date part, the headline, the catchphrase, and the content. And if you go to the C1 console again, and then we have uh, in the content perspective, I went ahead and did a a page called timeline. Below that, I attached my page data folder. For each uh, event I've done is, is, uh, is an element, I choose, when I created the data type, I, uh, I opted in for, for date foldering. I could have done a custom uh, tree using our uh, tree definition feature, where we, with a little bit of XML, can completely own the, the tree structure. <coughs> for this one, I just used what I'll get for free with the wizard. Um, and so, so I have a bunch of data in here uh, below my page. If we go, uh, uh, if you take the page, or oh, just select it, yeah. Uh, uh, and then I have a uh, timeline player function here. So this timeline player, where is this coming from? Um, it's this is the the razor part. So if we go to Visual Studio, we see the last piece of the puzzle if we ignore a CSS file. Um, so I went ahead and uh, I installed the, uh, the Razor uh, function uh, package from the Composite C1 contribution project. This will go ahead and give me a folder called Razor inside App Data Razor. In there I created a Composite presentation timeline foldering and a timeline player uh, file right here. So this will... Uh, Solely by doing this, uh, the uh, Razor player, uh, um, the Razor function uh, feature will pick up on this file, go ahead and compile it, and expose it as a uh, as a function inside um, my system. So, for instance, if you go ahead and select like information on this, uh, you can just get a, a quick overview. So this is what my function looks like. Uh, this is the name. The naming is controlled by the file and the placement. You can override that with an attribute, or uh, yeah, the, the, the name of it. No, no okay. Um, so it's fairly easy to find it. It's it's, it's strictly this this folder structure. And then I have some parameters. So where and we can see that two of them are. Uh, uh, or three of them are uh, optional, and one is uh, required. We can also see we have different kinds. We have like strings, the basic stuff, and then we have like a more advanced, like a data reference to uh, something inside our data system. Now the way, if we go back to Visual Studio, so the function exists because I have created this file. This alone will do it. It can even be an empty file with uh, like hello world in it. Secondly, if I go ahead and do public parameters, just doing a public parameter will automatically go ahead and create a, um, a public property, sorry. Doing a public property uh, will automatically give me a parameter inside uh, uh, the function. 
Yeah, yeah, get, get set, exactly. Um, the type uh, here is, is like I can do whatever I want. Um, if you go ahead and create your own objects and have something that can feed that into the function system, you can do that. Uh, here, it's, 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 we're using a, a composite C1 uh, element, like a data reference to, uh, to data. This one is a data reference to a media folder. So this is where I would go ahead and pick my colorful background uh, media folder. And then we have um, an attribute defined above each um, public property. This is optional. If I don't have it, uh, the, uh, the, the, the C1 parameters will have both name and label identical to the name. If I define this, I can then give a nice label. The name of the is already given, it's right here. I can also give some help text, and I can also uh, add um, some, some default uh, uh, values, so it's not a required parameter. Also, there is an ability to go ahead and uh, write some custom widget markup, like some XML, which controls how should the UI look when the user is filling out this field. So, but by default, for instance, if it's C1, we'll see, oh, this is a string. We will show a text box. If it sees a data reference, it will give a data uh, selector, a default data selector, and so on. Uh, but I can control uh, this. OK, so if we zoom out again, I added the file, I added these properties. Now I can go ahead and inherit from a, uh, uh, a class uh, which is part of the contrib. I don't have to, but if I do, uh, I will have access uh, to, uh, to some. Uh, Features, for instance, if we go down a wee bit and stop. So I can say it's, if I need to, to do data querying, I don't normally in C1, if you need to get data using C Sharp, you would go ahead and uh, say um, using um, data connection equals new data connection and then work with that connection. Uh, what the Razor functions will do is it will set up this connection for you initially, or at least the first time you reference it. Uh, make sure that you have a live data connection so you can just go data.get. Now I've added this to make it you know, more explicit uh, where this is coming from. Um, so if we go up, uh, up a little again to the top, all the way, all the way to the top. Um, Also included our data system, so I can so work, work with that. I also including the composite one data type, so I can get to media folder data, and then this is my own uh, namespace from the data uh, dynamic data type I created inside uh, the the UI, uh, and this enables me to to get at these uh, event data elements um, we we saw on the tree. So uh, I have the function, I have the parameters, I uh, can access data and uh, access my, uh, my own data without specifying the, the namespace each time. Then we have a bunch of uh, HTML. So the way we build this is like with uh, XSLT functions, for those of you familiar with that, uh, we specify a XHTML document. By doing this, uh, we will have a head and a body section now, when we embed the uh, Razor function on a page, obviously we do not want the finished page to contain a head and body section and so on in the middle of the page. So what, what Composite C1 always do at rendering time, no matter what function provider is, is, is delivering the XHTML, is to uh, normalize the document, meaning that we will take header elements and pull it up to the finished page head. So if I add something here, for instance, set a title, Let's try that. Try to go and uh, uh, in the heads just write uh, yeah well uh, in the browser you're actually pointing at another we should then also launch the this particular folder in a browser. The other window is uh, going online. Let's skip that. I'll just do it quickly but this will change the header. This is Oh yeah, you introduced a syntax error. But anyways, the, 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 the Firefox is pointing to a site online, Hackathon Composite Net. You can go there also if you want to download this and uh, see the, the presentations um, while this is running locally. So any change we do there won't actually affect what we have running in Firefox at the moment. OK, so but anyways, uh, that would enable me to, to override the page head. Yeah? 
Sorry? We have the Razer has its own built-in logic for sort of linking together content. Yeah. Where you can render sections, so yeah. you can actually name your sections and such. Yeah. Um, the starter side for Razer, I don't know if you've seen it. It, it uses it's, that. It's, yeah. yeah, no, I've just read Scott's blog on uh, the end. Yeah. Um, uh, so it has, it's actually one thing that has been missing with XSLT templates, it's like inheritance. Yeah. And the Razer templates, if you open layout, parent, yeah. actually, yeah. so okay, so this is like a quick side step, but this website is also based on our Razor templates. So we have the templates here, and then we have a master layout, um, which enable us to uh, to um, control the the individual elements and. Uh, But anyways, I, uh, I will skip because we're really uh, behind on time. But um, so this, but this is how templates look if you choose the Razor uh, starter site. Um, definitely, uh, yeah, a nice option. But if we go back to the uh, to the front page, so but what's important here is that even though I'm doing a little thing on a page, I can add stuff. I can add script tags and include jQuery and so on on my page. I don't have to go ahead and do special templating and, and things like that. I just write what I need right here and we will pull it up. Um, then uh, I'm including a font, yeah, I found a Google font. I'm including jQuery because I needed a little slide effect. So I'm including like a lot of JavaScript uh, for that. I was, I was lazy. Uh, and then um, I'm invoking the, the slider feature, which is uh, uh, enabling me to do some transitions and uh, uh, turning on uh, red buttons as my timeline progresses. So that's like taking care of the overall visual effects. And then for the rest of the money, it's, it's basically HTML. So for those of you that are not familiar with Razor, what we do is we, we write our HTML. And if we want at some point to switch into code, we use the add sign. If I just want to print out a simple value, uh, I can just go like down here. We have simple HTML. I then emit an add sign. Uh, and I can use parentheses, I don't have to actually. Uh, and then this will be ev evaluated as a dynamic value and inserted at this spot. So I will have slide node one, slide node two, slide node three, as I, for instance, uh, loop through this uh, loop right here. We get uh, event data from the system. I have a uh, where clause uh, making sure that it's for the current page. I then uh, examine the event data I get. Uh, to, to get the first and the last date, so I can like calculate the, uh, the timeline, where to place stuff, figure out the total amount of days uh, I have on my timeline. Then I uh, do my time notes, which are the small boxes at the top, loop uh, through them, uh, each of them. And then I'm using like an inline style to do some, uh, some lift positioning, uh, making sure that they end up at the right spot in relation to how many days there are. So that's a little bit of math in there. Most of the styling is in the, uh, of course, in the style sh in the style sheet. Uh, but if I need something dynamic like this, I, I used uh, inline styling for it. And then uh, below it, some labels showing the the first day and the last date. And then for each year, I will make sure to make a year label, so so you have some reference points throughout the the, the timeline. So this is my timeline, um, making my stuff. If you go up a little bit, just for the, I'll stop there. Uh, um, also have a, um, a uh, could you try to go right on this one? All the way, well, well, more, uh, more, 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 yeah. Okay, and a small long click event on the boxes, making sure that I'm switching slides. So it's, um, yeah. it's basic stuff and go, uh, let's go down to the timeline stage. So I created a stage where I'm showing the, uh, the elements. So this is like taking care of my pictures. I have a front page I will be showing uh, with a heading and a catchphrase. Now this heading and this catchphrase, so here I'm just referencing to the, uh, the properties I have um, on, my, uh, on my Razor uh, class, the one I defined above, the one that became parameters. So here I'm reading what the user added uh, as a parameter to me when, when invoking me on a page. Um, so just to, uh, to uh, if you make a space, again, like, 
I'll, 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 but, uh, but anyways, if, uh, so this is, um, yeah, also we have IntelliSense, of course, uh, so if we're working in Visual Studio, which is really nice. And then for each uh, uh, event uh, below, I'll go ahead and, and show a background image, looping through uh, image uh, folders and, and showing the, the three different elements uh, like this. So if we uh, go back to uh, Firefox, do a view source, just for the... Nope. No one to the right, and close that one. Yeah, uh, do, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so here we see uh, the stuff that I uh, added to my uh, local head is, is getting up here. Here I'm downloading the Google font, I'm adding jQuery, I'm getting the slide up and running, and here's the block I have. Then we have some of the, the general page template uh, thing that is uh, reused across pages. And if we go down a little bit, we get to the content box. Uh, and here's my timeline. So this is where my razor is starting. So here I see my razor code running. Here I'm looping through the slide node, one, two, three, four, blah, 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 for, for each uh, data element I'm getting out. I have my labels at the bottom. Uh, here we see the, uh, the styling, uh, local styling, making sure that's, that the stuff looks right. And I, I have my um, individual elements further down, if you go down a little wee bit. So here we see one element right here with a switching to free open source and the, and the uh, catchphrase and the uh, and the content box of it and so on, it continues uh, downwards. And these are all the, the slides. I'm loading them up front and then using client side to, to, to make the transition. And then we have the footer. If we go down here, so this is the page footer uh, again from the template. Now we're leaving probably at this point around here. We're leaving Razor again and we're back into the template um, at the other end. So I will, I will wrap this, this up, take some questions, uh, because we're short on time. But basically, you create a file, CS HTML file, that you place below App Data Razor. Your, your naming convention will automatically uh, generate a C1 function named like this. You create public properties to get parameters on your function. You can use attributes, if you want to, to give nice labels. You can add those later or while you're working with it. You can pass anything. This could also be a link predicate, like a where statement for those that know SQL, uh, that we would pass down here that Razor would then use to go query for data. Uh, so we can do a bunch of, of fancy stuff with the features in C1. Of course, we can uh, obviously grab data uh, and use uh, C Sharp as we like to, and we have a great header control of the finished page.